Hello there, my fellow Cabalite warriors, and welcome back to some 40k lore. In today's entry on the Dark Eldar, also known as Drukari by the younger hipster kids among you, we're gonna go over two of their unique types of warriors. Although calling them warriors might be stretching it a bit, as they are hooligans and performers in equal measure. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hellions and the Reavers. I'm your host, Archon GDN for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A Hellion is a member of one of the vicious airborne skimmer gangs to be found in the dark city of Komora. They are often used by the Dark Eldar Cabals on raids as a kind of jump infantry. Because of them, the tortured skies of the Dark City are war zones as perilous as its Xenos riddled ghettos and its noble ruled spires. Through these mists soar the arrogant lords and the winged hunters seeking the next kill. And the most savage of these airborne horrors are the Hellions, gangs of Dark Eldar who descend upon their prey in a flurry of blades before soaring away safely out of reach. The Hellions are Dark Eldar miscreants. Their numbers include aspirants not yet old enough to be chosen as Cabalite warriors, those who have been exiled by their Archon, and those who reject the life of a Cabal in favor of one of continued autonomy. The packs of the Hellions haunt the desolate regions of the Dark City, surviving with the use of their wits and taking pride in the scars they earn in the course of their lives. Hellions gather together into large gangs to ensure survival, and some of these gangs can be as big as a small cabal. They often have fierce rivalries between themselves and with the reavers and the scourges of the upper levels, for they resent above all else those who flaunt their privilege and status. Although a Hellion in his typical bravado might claim that he lives as he does for the terror and anarchy that he sows upon the others, like all Dark Eldar, they each secretly burn with ambition. Ambition to become a power in the city in their own right. The Hellions enter combat upon their iconic skyboards, single pilot and digravitic skimmers. These fast-moving platforms are highly coveted as symbols of independence. Each skyboard is personalized with trophies and glyphs, although most have changed hands several times in their history, one in ritual knife fights or claimed as bounty. Often they will be bedecked in the severed heads of several previous owners. They have numerous blades and compact anti-gravitic technology which allows them to soar far above the battlefield and swoop down to the ground in return. The pilots often use hooked chains to keep themselves from falling while moving. The skyboards are sensitive to the tiniest pressure, and because of that and for the sheer thrill of it, the Hellions take combat drugs that enhance their reaction still further until they can flip and jink at incredible speed, their reflexes just as sharp as their teeth. When not participating in real space raiding or their own aerial turf wars, Hellions can be found fighting in the arenas of the Witch Cults. Every night the cults scout out the sky battles, looking for Hellions whose skill and panache could draw an audience. Those chosen are given the opportunity to own their dogfighting skills against all kinds of alien foes. The skyboard riders are a perennial favorite among spectators, because invariably they either dispatch their opponents in some spectacular manner or they are torn screaming from the sky. As a result of this and for the sheer thrill of it, and because they take combat drugs, they can flip and jink like madmen. Unpredictable and wild, the Hellions attack the Cabals just as often as they joined with them in real space raiding. In turn, it is unusual for the Archons to bring their wrath to bear on a roving Hellion gang because they consider them much beneath their notice, and a Cabal bounty hunter skilled enough to bring a particular Hellion to the torture chamber is a rare specimen better employed in other ways. However, the Cabals do value the Hellions as terror troops and they are not above cutting deals with the Cabals or the Witch Cults, if the price is right. Many real space invasions undertaken by the Cabals are led by waves of howling, drug-maddened Hellions atop their skyboards. When in actual combat, a Hellion gang will swoop directly onto the main body of the enemy, screaming curses and mocking taunts in the Eldar language. Their signature weapon is the so-called Hellglaive, a double-bladed polearm with recurve hooks on each end, 
which allows a skilled wielder to latch onto nearby objects and rapidly change direction while on the skyboard. Each Hellglaive is viciously sharp, and it is a common practice for Hellions to call out beforehand a particular body part of an enemy that they intend to cut out on their next pass. Such is the skill with their blades that a swarm of Hellions can fall upon a squad of enemy soldiers and lop off their limbs and heads before scattering once again, while a single chosen victim is carried away into the sky to be cut apart at their leisure. The title given to a leader of a Hellion gang is the Heliarch. Obviously a Heliarch is the best warrior and the most skilled skyboard rider in their gang, and they also possess the finest weapons and war gear in the gang. They earn their position in single combat with their predecessor, and this is a duel that always ends in a high-speed chase and high-speed death for at least one of the combatants. The second of today's maniacs are the so-called Reavers. The Reavers are the Dark Eldar fascinated by bringing death to others at high speed. They ride into war upon the most streamlined and pared down of all Eldar skycraft, the Eldar Jetbike the perfect fusion of motion and lethal power. Most people know that the Eldar experience sensation and emotion to a far greater degree than other intelligent races of the galaxy, and their psyches are given over too easily to obsession. Reavers, having first gotten a taste for high-speed violence during raids from the webway into real space to take slaves, are those particular Dark Eldar obsessed with achieving the maximum impact kill. It is not enough for them to simply carry out acts of mayhem and murder or to soar in the air at overwhelming speed. These savage sadists must accomplish both at once to have their vile obsession sated. When they accomplish a well-placed and mortal blow delivered at an obscene rate of speed, they feel a particular spike of pure joy that Reavers consider the ultimate thrill in life. In the toroid racing arenas that girdle the highest spires of the Dark City, the Reavers duel among themselves for supremacy. These vain and mortally competitive riders engage in death races each and every night, their jet bikes screaming around each arena in a high-stakes battle, which brings screams of ecstasy from their bloodthirsty crowd of spectators. No quarter is ever asked or given in these races, for to come in last is literally a death sentence. They will pull every trick that they know on the back of a jet bike to secure even a fraction of a second's advantage over a competitor. The arena champions endlessly modify their craft's veins and blast engines, installing targeting holograms for the jet bike's built-in weapons, pierce their skimmer craft's fairings so that the shriek of the air created by the passing is of a pitch that distinguishes them from their peers, or wear flexible suits akin to second skins to eliminate air resistance. The Reavers, like other Dark Eldar warriors, use artificial narcotic stimulants to enhance their performance and capacity for sensation in the death races or in combat. They are cheats and liars like so many of their kind, and they only give respect to those that they consider pulled off an elegant kill. It is considered improper to simply maim a fellow rider during a death race while a well-executed decapitation strike while riding inverted can bring a smile to even the most black-hearted Archon. Because of this no-holds-barred approach, weapons are extensively utilized during the death races, even in the most prestigious of the toroid arenas. The most infamous and celebrated reavers employ underslung graph talons to push their rivals into the artfully bladed contours of the arena walls or release clusters of proximity-sensing, anti-gravity caltrops that detonate in spectacular fashion behind them to the crowd's applause. Reavers are so attuned to their beloved jet bikes that in combat in a real space raid, they can use them as if they were extensions of their own body. Though a Reaver jet bike usually incorporates a splinter rifle, the craft itself is the weapon too. The Reavers pilot their jet bikes with such uncanny precision that they can take off a head or even slash open a throat with a single pass of their keel. A favorite tactic is to dive down from the clouds, corkscrewing the craft so that the razored edges of the blades dismember those unfortunate enough to be caught in its pass or rip through them head on. The most skilled of Reavers are those who have consistently proven to be the victors in the nightly arena races of Komora. During real space raids that make use of the Reaver squads, they are often led by the arena champions, 
who possess enhanced war gear and represent the pinnacle of the already preternatural reaver skill with a reaver jet bike. Compared to the high-speed opponents that they are used to facing, most soldiers from lesser races seem slow and lumbering. Reavers will always find a way to add excitement to combat, however, often competing with each other to see who can achieve the swiftest and most spectacular kill. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to narrate for you on the high-speed maniacs which are the Dark Eldar Hellions and Reavers for today. I think that with these guys, what you see is pretty much what you get. Personally, I like the Reavers more, as they do use an actual vehicle. As opposed to the Hellions, who are pretty much homicidal skater boys. Also, for those of you who are fans of Dark Eldar vehicles, I do intend to make another episode on their bigger skimmers, including the Raider, Venom and Ravager. So, do stay tuned for that. As always, I welcome your thoughts on the Hellions and the Reavers in the comments below should you want to share them. If you found this informative or entertaining, do leave a like, share and subscribe for future content. Until next time, the Emperor protects.